Well, I have a, what might be a question you weren't expecting. I don't know. But I just want to ask you, have you ever seen an octopus multitask? I'm going to show you a video. That is amazing how all the arms are out just searching independently, looking for food. Wow. How does he do that? I, I don't even know. But you know who that reminds me of? My son, Stephen. Did you see how he multitasks when he leads us in worship? He does at least four things at one time. He leads us, sings a worship song, strums that guitar, and kicks that drum all on time, and still has time to worship God. Wow, that is a lot of things at once. He is basically an octopus, I think. Uh, now, I, I am curious about what is your reaction when you see Stephen multitask like that? What's your reaction? Is it fascination? Is it fear? Is it intrigue? Is it wonder? How does he do that? I don't, I, what do you think? Are, are you jealous? Is it jealousy that arises in you? Like what happens when you see him? This is what I want to encourage you to do. Volunteer to take one of those jobs from him, <laughs> okay? If you, if you play guitar or drums or you are a worship vocalist, come on. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do this together. Awesome. Well, just a little bit of fun there. We're in this series, Made for More. You are made for more. You singular, you plural are made for more. And we've been talking about the church. You plural, the, uh, all of us together, you are the church built on Jesus, a house for his presence, and not even death can stop you. And I don't know how often you think of yourselves as part of a house, but you, we together, we are a house for God's presence. You are the church. We are the church. This building is not the church. And that's why I can say today the church is gathering, gathering only online today as it happens. But we, the church, are gathering. Now, last week we talked about becoming known and loved by the people around you in your church. And I, I really emphasize there's two environments that are key. Either one of these or both will really help you become known and become loved. And that is serve on a team. I, I, just, I just cannot stress it enough. That is how we make friends. Serve on a team. That's how you become known. Because while you serve, you talk. It's just a natural part of it. The second great environment is Together Nights. Together Nights is a place where we gather together, we study God's word together, we pray for one another, and even in that prayer, we can see uh, in each other the kinds of things that are important to you, the kinds of things that are important to me, and we know each other. We love each other because of gathering together. So tonight, uh, Together Nights is going to be online on Zoom. Let's do it. Let's take advantage of that opportunity. Let's not be a silo. Let's not be a recluse. Let's not be an island, but let's be connected. Amen? Amen. amen. Yes, I, the amens are coming in the comments. I'm sure of it. Would you, today I want to talk about your significance in the church. Your significance in the church. So would you turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 24. And we'll look at that in just a minute. The problem is so many times we think to ourselves, I'm not an upfront leader. I don't have any amazing talent that could be used in the church. I, so I don't have anything valuable to contribute. Our, our mindset starts going down that track. Or I have heard this before. Uh, I don't know if you've ever said this, but if, if all we had show up some Sunday was a, the preacher and the worship leader, we could have church. Well, we're, we're kind of being tested on that today. <laughs> but I can tell you that is not true because the church is the people. It is all of us. So if just the preacher and just the worship leader showed up, that's all that could make it because of a snowstorm or something, a teeny part of the church would be here. But the church is not a building. The church is not something we show up at. The church is the people who show up. <laughs> we are the church. 
However, I do want to, that's kind of the obvious one, but I just want to go beyond that one step. Also, if only Steve-O and I showed up on a particular Sunday, here's how I would sound. I would sound silent because it takes more than just a person standing on a platform to even present the ministry that we do together every Sunday. There would be nothing on the screen at here in the room or at home. If only uh, Stephen and I showed up, there, it would be a lot quieter here. And you know this in your own life. Think about how many people it takes to even have a family and to keep a family going. Someone's got to earn the income. Someone's got to buy the groceries. Someone's got to plan the meal. Someone's got to take care of the kids. Someone's got to wake up the kids. Someone's got to go back in and try to wake them up again every Sunday, or every morning on the, before school. Someone's got to pay attention to homework. Someone's got to pay the bills, collect, you know, collect the bill statements online or whatever, pay them online. Someone's got to do all those things. It takes a lot of people to, get, uh, to keep a family going. Uh, another kind of another area where it takes a lot of people is it takes a lot of people to put on a major movie. Uh, I, I did a little bit of research, and typically there are two thousand names in the end credits for a typical major movie. Even though maybe uh, depending on the movie, there there might be ten to fifty people on the screen in the movie, but it takes 2,000 people to make that movie happen. It's possible, uh, this is not verified, but uh, it's possible that Iron Man 3 had the longest credits in movie history with 3,708 names in the end credits for Iron Man 3. That is crazy. And not every single person who, who has a part in the movie makes it in the end credits. It's the ones they consider had an integral, integral part in the movie. Can you imagine 3,700 people it took to make that movie? Well, the Bible has several intriguing word pictures about the church for trying to describe what the church is. It's called a family. It's called a flock, like a flock of sheep. It's called a temple, a house for God's presence. Well, today I want to look at a specific word picture in the Bible. And this word picture, picture refers to a complex system of systems. And it's spoken about in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. And this is what it says. Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of his body, the church. And today, I want to talk to you about the body. You and I together, we are the body of Christ. It's a word picture. Uh, but it is stated like this. You are his body. And so there's all kinds of, think of things I think about that. We just read Christ is the head of the church. He is the leader. He is the one who sets the direction. He is the one that has the vision. And the body is the one who does it. it he actually does his work through you and me. It's very powerful and very cool. It's a, it's a cool image of how Jesus works and what the church is. So think how wonderfully complex and interdependent, all the systems, uh, all the parts of the human body are. It's, a, it's amazing. It's a bunch of separate systems. Circulation, digestion, muscles, skeleton, nerves, waste elimination, respiration or breathing, reproduction. All those systems work together in the body. And each system is made up of multiple parts. So our body is a system of systems. It is a bunch of groups working together to keep that body functioning, keep it going. Each system is interconnected. For example, the blood delivers oxygen that the, that the lungs got all ready for it. And the, and the digestive system gets all the nutrients all broken down so the body can use it. And then the blood system takes that, distributes it throughout the whole body wherever it's needed. Really, the body is so interconnected that if one system is sick or missing, the whole body suffers. 
The, the rest of the body cannot even function up to its full potential if one system is down in the body. And, and think about it, in your body, if you get sick, it impacts your mission to take care of your family. Like, it impacts your, your, your ability to go work and do the things that you need to do and get the groceries and all that stuff. If one part of your body's down, it affects the rest of your family. It's, it's so central. So how is the church like a human body? Well, the, uh, one of the early church leaders, Paul, he writes about it extensively in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And he talks about, here's how it's like that. He says in verse 12, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So many parts, but one body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews. Some of us are Gentiles. Some are slaves and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit. And listen to this. And we all share the same spirit. So we, the church, we gather every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. We gather together. And when we do, we are young and old. We are male and female. We are single and married. We have every beautiful skin tone imaginable. Many of us were born in, in different countries, and that's one thing I've always loved about our congregation, is that we are literally a gathering of the world. I love culture. I love traveling. I love languages. I love all that. So it's just very beautiful to me that people from different nations gather together, and we're one church. We're, we're the body of Christ so the truth of this little, uh, these first few verses that I read is the Holy Spirit makes us one. The Holy Spirit makes us one. Separately, we're, we're just a bunch of individuals with a lot of different backgrounds and experiences and cultures, but the Holy Spirit makes us one. And that is one of the, the amazing things that God does. It is one of the miracles that he, that he has done. And uh, people, when you think about the state of our nation right now, we are the opposite of one. We are so divided. We are more divided than we've ever been. So divided on literally every single issue facing us. Our natural way is to divide. So when I say that the Holy Spirit makes us one, that is a sense of the divine. That, that is something that God does, and he does it in us so beautifully. All of us who have put our faith in Jesus, we all share the same spirit. When you put your faith in Jesus Christ, he comes into your life by his spirit. And we all make up one body, the body of Christ. Okay, going on in uh, same chapter, verse 14. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. And then he's going to look at those parts and, and sort of uh, approach them from two different attitudes. So the first one is this, verse 15. If the foot, for example, says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not a hand. The hand, like, man, that's where it's at, the hand. If a foot says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. Verse 16, and if the ear says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not the eye. I mean, the eyes, am I right? They're so great. But would that make the ear any less a part of the body? Just because an ear or a foot feels insignificant, that does not mean that in the body they are insignificant. I'm talking about how they feel. If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? In other words, you are significant, and your significance is your uniqueness. Your significance, the thing that gives you value in the body of Christ, the thing that makes you significant, I could say to you, every single person engaging today, you are significant. Why would I say that? Because the very fact that there's only one you, that, makes, that gives you a value above anything else. No, no one else has your value. 
You are important. You are unique. You are different. You have the fingerprints of God on you differently than I do or anyone else in the body. Your significance is actually in your uniqueness. It's not just in your talents, your skills, or anything else. It's just in the fact that you are you. And you are special. You are significant. And your significance is in your uniqueness. I love how the message translation of the Bible says this. Uh, It's a paraphrase. It's a poetic paraphrase. Think about how all this makes you more significant, not less. Being an ear, being a foot... It makes you more significant, not less. A body is not just a single part blown up into something huge. It's all the different but similar parts arranged and functioning together. If foot said, I'm not elegant like hand, embellished with a bunch of beautiful rings, I guess I don't belong to the body because I'm not as beautiful as a decorated hand, would that make it not part of the body? No. If ear said, I'm not beautiful like I, limpid and expressive, I don't deserve a place in the head, would you want to remove your eye from the body, I mean your ear from the body? No. We're supposed to all be different. We're supposed to all have different roles. That is the way God planned it. And it's a beautiful testimony to his power that he makes us one. That's actually our strength when we all engage together. But going on, verse 18. But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. So the truth that we're going to explore here is no part is important on its own. No part is important on its own. Verse 19, how strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can never say to the feet, I don't need you. Listen, you guys, a lung is important, but a lung on the ground outside a body is not doing much good, if you know what I mean. The importance, the lung is only important because of what it's a part of. And that's the way it is in the body of Christ. Your significance is in your uniqueness, but no part is important on its own, by itself. And this keeps you humble. So uh, today, just in the passages we've just read, we've, we've tried to lift you up and say, hey, don't be saying I'm just a this or I'm just a that. You're important. Also, don't be saying I'm all this or I'm all that because you're nothing without the body. It's because it's what you're a part of that makes you important. The message says, for no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you're a part of. An enormous eye or a gigantic hand wouldn't be a body. It would be a monster. Uh, I love the comic strip, and I don't, I don't think it's even happening anymore, the far side. And there's, there's one of the far side where it has this nose walking in, and it was, it was supposed to be a spoof of a, of a horror movie. It's just, you know, a, a drawn comic, and it said, the severed nose of Dr. Bellucci comes back to life. It's just, it's, it's just so ridiculous. Uh, a, a part of the body without the body is just a monster. What we have is one body with many parts, each with its proper size and its proper place. No part is important, only on its own. Can you imagine eye telling hand, get lost, I don't need you. I mean, who would clean out your eye without the hand? We need each other, right? Or head telling foot, you're fired. The job has been phased out. The head's not getting anywhere if the foot don't take it. You know what I mean? Like we gotta, we're in this thing together. If you don't think you have any worthwhile, applaudable abilities to add to the body, the good news for you is basic does not mean unnecessary. Basic does not mean unnecessary. Even if you think you are just basic, you're just plain, you've got nothing spectacular to to offer, you are necessary to the body of Christ. Verse 22, in fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most 
necessary. Like I say, it's the smelly foot that takes that head around. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, if you know what I mean, while the more honorable parts do not require this special care. So God has put the body together such that honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. As a matter of fact, in practice, it works the other way. The lower the part, <laughs> the more basic, therefore the more necessary. Think about this. You can live without an eye, but you can't live without a stomach. Isn't that interesting? The eye is the, eyes, the more glorious, the more visible one, the one that we put mascara around and guy liner around and all that kind of stuff. But man, you can't go too long without a stomach, if you know what I mean. You got you to gotta have food to keep going. When it's a part of your own body that you're concerned with, every part matters to you. I don't know if you've ever had just a little little thing right beside your nail that just hurts. Or uh, like right now, I got a little zit happening right here on my nose, and it hurts. It's just the teeniest little thing. But, man, I care about that. I want that thing gone. I want that thing healed. Uh, whatever's got to happen. When it's your body, every single little thing matters. You are the body of Christ. You might think you're a little pimple. To Jesus, you matter. You matter simply because you're part of the body of Christ. And I, I hope that is, is getting into your spirit today, into you. You give all the parts of your body dignity because you care about them all when they're yours. And that's the way Jesus feels too. We don't always stop to think about all the behind-the-scenes people in the church that it takes just to create a service, for example, especially when we're all together in person. And services are only one thing of the many things that the church does. I began to think about our end credits in the church. There are people every week who plan the service, create the graphics, create the slides and videos, run the soundboard, the broadcast switcher, run the two cameras, run the presentation computer. There are people who greet people at the door. There are people who usher people to their seats. There are people who prepare the offering deposit every single week. There are people who provide security. There are people who check in the kids. There are people who volunteer in the nursery and kids' church. There are people who take and record temperatures of all the volunteers and leaders every single week for two years. Uh, there are people who lead the Together Nights groups. There are people who clean the building and grounds. There are people who paint the rooms. Those were just the first things kind of top of mind that came to me when I thought about who puts on the service. But services are only one thing we do. We have some events coming up. There are people who plan those events, people who set up for those events, people who clean up for those events, people who volunteer at the events, people who publicize the event. That's just the events. Then another thing that we do as a church, we care for the sick the best that we can. As long as we know uh, someone like, for example, if someone's in surgery, if someone has a surgery, we know that ahead of time. We uh, organize, we make meals, we organize meals, we uh, get people praying, we deliver meals after surgery. Uh, that uh, I know sometimes we miss it, but we do our best to do that every time we are aware uh, of someone having a surgery. That's just one thing that the church does. Another thing that, that the church does, and I'm thinking only about these past couple weeks, we help the homeless with, find resources. We work with people completing community service projects. And not, not everybody does that, but we do that. We, we go that extra mile. Uh, we provide support to those who are seeking deliverance. We provide support to those who are breaking addictions. We minister to those who are grieving. That's just in the last week or two, we have done all of those things. That's what the church does. And all of that took people working together, every person important, every person a part of the body of Christ. Coming up, we're going to give gifts to kids at Christmas who might not have an opportunity to have gifts otherwise. And, and we are going the extra mile. Not just a toy, although there will be a toy. We're also going to provide a need for them, the need that the child requested or that their parent requested. All of these things what, uh, that can only happen as the church, the body of Christ, does the work that the head, Jesus, led us to. 
He says, do this. He gives us the vision, the provision, the resources, and then we, the body of Christ, do it. And it is a total group effort. Now, realize so many of the things I just mentioned are very basic, unglamorous things. Wrapping a Christmas present, buying one, uh, walking with someone, praying for someone, making a dinner. These are all very basic things. Saying hi to people at the church, caring for babies in the nursery. Such basic things. But when you put them all together, it is literally world changing. We are impacting people's world. Wow, that is awesome. And that is who we are. And that is who you are. Uh, Let's read the last couple of verses that I'm going to read from this passage. Verses 25 and 26. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. And that's the cool thing. When you're connected, you're affected. When you're connected, you're affected. Now, this this past week, you heard us pray about it earlier in the service. There's, there was one of our, our uh, families, our church family members, who lost a family member. And we grieve with them. We pray for them and for the family. It was, uh, it was a very bad situation. It hurts us. And we walk with them. We encourage them. I, I got to pray with family and text others. And we're affected and at the same time when someone in our congregation is promoted or gets a windfall or they something good happens in their life they have a baby or just whatever happens we rejoice with them we are not like the crabs in a bucket you heard about them the crabs in a bucket if one crab tries to get out of the bucket all the other crabs yank him right back down oh no you're not going anywhere if i don't get to escape you that's not the way it is in the body of christ We love each other. We care about each other. We rejoice when someone has something good happen to them. Because when you're connected, you're affected. I love the summary of this whole passage in the message. The way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church. Every part dependent on every other part the parts we mention and the parts we don't. The parts we see and the parts we don't. If one heart, if one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. I love that. Yes, if one part flourishes, every other part enters into the exuberance. You, plural, are the church built on Jesus a house for his presence. I'm going to add this today. With a unique part to play. And not even death can stop you. Hallelujah. Engage with the body of Christ. That's that's my challenge to you today. Engage with the body of Christ. Either serve on a team or participate in Together Nights. And for some of you, today might be the first one. Tonight's Together Nights is the most important ever because we didn't get to gather in person this morning. So, wow, engage in one of those two things. Engage in the body of Christ. You, you, are, you are significant. And your part of your value comes in just who you're connected with and what you're doing as a group, as a body. How do you take the next step? How do you, how do you, how do you either serve or, or be a part of Together Nights? It's very simple. On the app or on our website, go to signups. Go to signups, and then all the options are there. Choose all that apply and get involved. Just go go to signups, and then uh, when you click on, the, click on the thing, like, so for example, if you want to serve on a team, click on serve, and then register. That might... Might, that word might not be intuitive to you, but if you register, that's how you sign up. And that will just simply let us know, hey, I, I want to serve. I want to serve in a new way. And we're actually, we'll give you a bunch of options there when you go do that. Several ideas 
for how to serve, and there's also a write-in thing where you can say, I want to serve in this way. So no matter what you want to do, there's a super easy way to get involved. Just go click sign up, serve, and then register to do that. Or just come tonight. Just come online. So the, the way to do that, click on Together Nights and sign up or register. All right. I want to just pray this morning. So I've been challenging you all morning, especially in this on, online-only day. Let's engage, okay? So put down that sandwich. Put down that coffee cup. Put down whatever you're doing. Uh, you can keep, keep your, your phone in your hand if that's what you got to do. But would you actually stand to your feet right where you are? Stand to your feet. Because we're going to do this. We're going to pray. You're not going to watch me pray. We're going to pray together, okay? I'm just going to lead us. I'm going to lead us in prayer. But let's us pray together. We are the church. Join me in prayer. Let's pray right now. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you so much for the miracle, especially in today's day and age, of taking all of us separate people, all of us with our different backgrounds, different cultures, even different languages, our different abilities, and you take us all together and you make us the body of Christ. Wow, wow, wow. We are unified around you, Jesus. You're our head. And we are unified around you. We're going where you say to go. We're going to do what you say to do. And we are one because we are the body of Christ. And I thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you, you gave us an opportunity, this technology, that we could get together online today. Thank you. And we're going to use it to full advantage. But, Lord, I pray that as much as possible beyond this, that we would gather together in person so that we can see each other eye to eye and encourage each other that way. And each of us can take up our spots, our roles, our parts in the body of Christ. Lord, I pray that you would bless our congregation and bless all those who, are, who, who, are, who might tune in at a later time even. Lord, I pray that you would bless us with your presence. You bless us with your significance that you give us. Lord, I pray that we would grow as, as the body of Christ right here at NFC, I pray that we would grow with people coming to put their faith in Jesus and being discipled and following you. Lord, I pray that, that we would grow in terms of our service, that we would grow in terms of our togetherness, our connectedness, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I want to give one more prayer. I want to pray for, for you. If if I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus. If you've not done that or if you've kind of wandered away from God, we drift away. If we're drifting, it's away. If, if today you want to come back to God, I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus. Now, if you are a regular part of NFC, you've heard me give this invitation several times, please don't just check out and sign off. Would you begin to pray right now? Would you begin to pray that even right now and in future days when this, when this message is watched, that people would put their faith in Jesus? But I want to talk to you if, you've not, if you need to do that today. I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus. Become part of the body of Christ. How do you do that? Turn away from your sin. Turn your life over to Jesus instead. And ask him to lead you. Begin to follow Jesus. Become his apprentice. An apprentice is not someone who just reads about Jesus and says, great, that was interesting. An apprentice studies Jesus, talks to Jesus, walks with Jesus, works with Jesus, worships with Jesus. That's what an apprentice does. I want to invite you to be his apprentice. Today, if you want to make that decision to put your faith in Jesus, I encourage you to do it. I encourage you, take this opportunity. Don't let it slip by you. And I'll, I'll just coach you in a prayer. I'll just, I'll just show you how. Uh, prayer is not a formula, though. You can, you can use your own words. But here's the kind of ways I would encourage you to pray to put your faith in Jesus. Would you just repeat after me right where you are? And if you're with anybody at all, maybe just look over to them and say, Hey, you need to pray this prayer. You need to pray this prayer. I'll pray it with you. Let, let's do it together. Would you repeat after me, Jesus? I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice starting now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the body of Christ. 
You are a part of the body of Christ, even though it's only been a few seconds. You are a part of the body of Christ, and that makes you significant. You're part of something really, truly amazing. So would you just let me know that you prayed that prayer today? Would you take out your smartphone and just text the word RESTART to our same phone number we've been using all day, to the phone number 97000, text RESTART. And let, that will let me know, hey, I put my faith in Jesus today. And I just want to encourage you, though, once, once you text that, follow the prompts. Whatever, whatever I'm asking you to do, or if uh, someone else sends an initial text, whatever we ask you to do, would you just, would you reply back? And, and uh, just give us that, that minimal information so we can keep walking together and following Jesus. Yeah. Amen. 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 So good. So good. We are the church. We, all of us, and we all have a part to play, a very important part. Amen. Well, as we are uh, just finishing up our service, there's a few things I want to remind you of. Now, there's a few of it, more of us online than normally on a Sunday. Why don't we take this moment to subscribe or, or like the, our YouTube channel to help more people find us? I mean, let's help get the word out, right? Yeah. And then um, we will be keeping you posted as far as what is coming uh, next Sunday and in the future. Now, here's the deal. If you do not get our emails or if you did not get a text today, text the word GREET to 97000 and follow those prompts. You will be able to put your email address in there if you are not getting our emails. And if you do that, you will get our texts from now on. So that's for anybody that's new or not. That's the way to get connected, and we will keep you posted. So we definitely want to be connected, right? All right. So we will be with you next Sunday, either online or not, but we will definitely be meeting together as a church. Have a wonderful week. Stay safe. Stay healthy. God bless.